Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, depending on when you're watching this, uh, probably a good afternoon. It's the evening when I'm recording it, though. Um, today's gonna be a slightly different video. It's just gonna be kind of a um, kind of a run through on my lineup. Um, it was a request uh, in the comments in one of the videos, so I figured today's event, uh, the test your strength, would be a great uh, a great opportunity to do that. Uh, so this event um, is uh, obviously it uh, increases every time. So we're looking at uh, each of the different uh, types of rarities that you have. Uh, and because of that, I think this is a great event to talk about um, kind of balance and how things are set up in the game. Uh, so commons, um, they're the first creatures that you get. Um, I've got a whole bunch of them, as you can see by the bar at the bottom. It's pretty, uh, pretty tiny. I have no idea how many I have, but I have a lot. A lot of the paddocks are maxed out. Um, not all of them are, but a lot of them are. Anyways, why I have what I have. Uh, the commons that you get early on, uh, just the standard commons, it's just kind of what you use to get through events as you're first starting out. Um, but as you start to unlock hybrids, um, you start making the hybrids. The hybrids are, are key. Um, and the reason being is um, if Ludia decides um, to do any kind of event where they enact rules, um, so something they introduced I want to say a year and a half ago. I feel like, like a year and a half ago. Um, where the instituted rules. Rules being that uh, they could select or narrow down the way an event um, was categorized. Uh, so maybe it was just a super rare event. Uh, maybe it was a tournament that was just super rares. Um, maybe it was a tournament that was just carnivores and herbivores or maybe it was just a super rare level 20 and lower um, it, it, there's a ton of you know, there's so many combinations of rules that could be picked um, but, but because of that uh, you have to kind of make a decision on how you're gonna set up all your different lineups uh, if you only focus on one area of the game or one specific type of creature or one specific type of rarity of the creature um, you you stand yourself or you open yourself up to vulnerabilities when it comes to the way that Lydia plans their events. So before that, um, I tried to be as balanced as I can across all the different um, classes. So uh, if we're talking Jurassic, obviously you got pterosaurs, your herbivores, your amphibians, and your carnivores, um, but also the rarities, right? So the different rarities that you can get obviously in this event here we're only looking at commons um, but each uh, battle stage we go through this event we'll look at different uh, rarities so next will be uh, you know rare and then super rare and then legendary and then hybrid um, and then um, actually I think that's it for for this event but um, all of those things um, are ways that they can kind of slice and dice when it comes to rules uh, so for commons, I've got a bunch of hybrids um, at the top of my top of my heap here, if you will. Um, and really, that's just because a they're great for events like this. Uh, they're great for the um, the food event uh, that happens once a week. The oh man, I'm sorry. Um, the the hybrids just kind of make those events kind of on autopilot um, because typically those events are only going to bring standard level 40 uh, common creatures not hybrids and so you throw in a couple hybrids and it's kind of like a easy button win if you will um, but uh, most of these I've made uh, over time uh, and it's really more so now that my market is clean of um, creatures and I am typically looking for something to put in that first slot uh, in between playing and I'll dump a hybrid in. Why? Because the hybrids are fairly uh, reasonable price, right? So, uh, you know, they're anywhere from, you know, $12.90 for the Alanosaurus 
um, up to 2030 for the Pelican Atrix. Um, and so, you know, it's DNA. It's not a lot of DNA. Um, if you're bringing in enough DNA, it's kind of like I might hatch out one or two of these a day. It just depends. And over time, um, I build up uh, a paddock. That's just kind of the way that it works. Once a paddock starts to get full, um, like this guy, um, I will start fusing them up uh, and making some space for additional ones. So like this guy here, I've been making some level tens. Once it gets uh, you know close to being full, I'll fuse a few of them and get them up to level 20 and then 30 and then 40 uh, and go start start the whole cycle over again. Um, but uh, the commons come in handy. It's just the ways that I know some people will use them even in the tournaments. I will at different stages, um, but some folks swear by the uh, some of the different common hybrids as uh, some of their mainstays for early tournament uh, runs. So, you know, it's just one of the things that's... Uh, so that's kind of commons in a nutshell, but you'll see that I've got uh, pterosaurs, I've got herbivores, got more pterosaurs, got carnivores. Unfortunately, there is no amphibian common hybrid, so that is a gap. It's a gap that I don't have a choice because they don't have a creature that fits that gap. Um, it just kind of is what it is. When they do make an amphibian hybrid, I will definitely um, load up on them uh, on the common side if they ever do. Uh, unfortunately, all of the common amphibians currently uh, all have hybrids already associated with them. So they would either have to insert a new common uh, amphibian or they'd have to do like a common super hybrid, um, you know, which is a possible, but. Uh, we have to kind of wait and see the, what they're going to do there. But for this event, I always just throw in kind of one of my lower level creatures because if this event does not matter if it's a level 40 hybrid or a level 1 uh, common. This is about getting this event done, um, essentially. But the... Uh, the pterosaur common uh, hybrids are very actual strong. They're actually pretty um, robust uh, and good um, good creatures to have on your team. Let's hope he goes for it. There we go. Perfect. All right, and then we got rares. And rares is where we start to introduce super hybrids, uh, as well as regular hybrids. Um, and I've got kind of a whole slew of creatures here. Uh, recently added the uh, Tappy, uh, Tappy Jalosophilosis. I think I said that right, something like that. Um, but uh, a very, very strong um, pterosaur with a rare uh, rarity. Um, very strong. Uh, the Diplosuchus is also very strong. Um, I haven't made any level 40s because I don't need any level 40s. There's no gap in my lineup that I need it to cover currently. And the level 30s are great for tournament uh, dominator uh, battles, so I just kind of leave them uh, where they are. Uh, the level 30... Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. The level 30 um, Tepigestillosaurus... Um, uh, or Tepigest... Tappy Jalosophilus <laughs> um, is actually at level 30, um, extremely strong. Um, so if we go into here, you can see where this guy lines up. Um, 
it's you know right up there I mean it's right next to a level 20 Udon um, in ferocity like, it's really strong it's a really good uh, flyer it is my flyers that are right below uh, my level 23 um, Atrophodons. Um, there is definitely a gap between those to these guys, um, but they are great. They got more health um, than the uh, Metrophodon, uh, so they can be good um, creatures to uh, call on if need be. Uh, but let's go back to our rare one here event. Um, but uh, again, before they introduced the super hybrids, um, I had a really good kind of balance of um, my pterosaurs, my carnivores, uh, my herbivores, and then uh, my amphibians, um, which of course are much, much weaker than the other ones. Uh, and it's just kind of the way they've set these up. But uh, the reason why I have so many of these, um, of these ones is mostly because of doing coins for Jurassics uh, as custom trades in the Trade Arbor. Typically, I will get uh, one hybrid a day um, out of my three, and that typically is gonna be a rare hybrid. And over time, uh, I just, build up and then again once my paddock gets close to full I fuse them up and then make space and then I end up with a bunch of level 40s now the carnivores if you've watched any of my tournament videos are kind of my go-to for predator league um, they're great creatures um, decent cooldowns um, they're just overall good good creatures to have um, really any of the rare hybrids are fantastic um they're really good creatures so if you have the ability to unlock them unlock them because they will be you know, useful for your game in some way shape or form um and then we do have the rare only i think it's the money event um but again it is just using um you're just battling regular common rares, so you throw in a couple hybrids, and again, it's kind of hitting the easy button. You don't have to really think about those those events. They're pretty straightforward. Um, but they, they are good creatures, and they are good creatures to have, and then these guys um, are really where uh, they come in handy in Dominator and even some of my PvE events um, that don't have um, classification requirements, so, you know, not legendary. Um, but if they are hybrid needed, then uh, these obviously work well for that. But again, for this event, uh, we don't need anything that's strong. We don't need to waste them on anything. The reason why those other ones are on cooldown is from the boss. We take care of uh, items for that. I'm just going for enough for that. Okay. super rare so same thing uh, the super hybrids are out in front clearly and then we got where the standard uh, hybrid starts and it goes down uh, from there the uh, reason I have so many of the flyer here I'm not gonna try to say the name right now because I'm gonna butcher it um, but it is a uh, common one that comes up in the custom trade harbor. Uh, the other ones mm. rarely do. I don't know if it's because of the, uh, the relative strength of this guy. It's pretty weak. Uh, you can see at level 40, uh, it's not as good as a level 30 Ankylodocus. It's barely better than uh, the level 40 Parasaur. And then, you know, the other ones just go up from, from there. 
Um, but uh, for those that have been playing the game for a while, uh, you'll know that Fight for Funds event, in fact, one of my videos uh, covers this, one of my early videos, uh, covers about, you know, why your Fight for Funds event is so hard. Um, and it's so hard because of the Spinal Seussures. Um, it is way stronger than the uh, other uh, creatures. And then you've also got the Monostegatops, um, which is also really strong. Monostegatops have been around longer, so I have a lot more of them than the, uh, the Spinal Tessuchus. Um, but uh, when it was a rare only event, for whatever reason, um, the Fight for Funds event would only give you Spinal Tessuchus to fight against because that was the highest level um, creature or carnivore that you could get. And there was no counter for it because your other creatures were monostegatops, but you were getting, uh, you know, uh, spinal suitors that were as strong or stronger than your monostegatops, uh, and they've got a lot of attack to begin with. And so when they get class advantage, they get a really lot of attack, and they would just ultimately obliterate your monostegatops. So if you had monostegatops, uh, that was really high, like, you know, like a level 30 or, God forbid, a level 40 at that time. Um, there is no counter to a level 40 Spina Tessuchus um, or a level... And this is when it first came out. It all of a sudden just came into the game as an option for the AI to use, but there was no option for a player at that point to have had uh, it available. And so you would get these crazy hard matchups. Um, there's no Amphibian again. Uh, thanks, Ludia, for making that uh, problem here as well. Uh, the Caprasuchus is the highest level aquatic you can have on a super rare uh, from a health standpoint, and it could barely withstand one attack from some of the Spinal Tessuchuses that you would face in that event. And so you'd have to, you know, kind of have a throwaway creature that could try to help you build up some reserve. Um, and then you'd have to take them out with either a Spinosuchus, a Spinoraptor, um, a Superano Titan, um, or even um, higher level Monostegatops. Uh, well, even with a reduced attack, um, the spots who just don't have a lot of health, and so you could also take them out with, with those. It was a very interesting event, but uh, all that to say, if they were to have another super rare only event that was based off of ferocity of your top three, like for instance here I've got my three monostega tops that are in my top three. If I get matched up against carnivores that are those same strengths, I'm not really going to have much to counter them with other than other carnivores. Um, or fodder pterosaurs because the pterosaur that's up that high just doesn't have all that great of health or attack. Um, but yeah, so again, you want to uh, focus on balance. Uh, what's available to you for hybrids, go for them because they're all useful at some point. Um, and yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta kind of work through them. Um, I use a lot of the monostegatops and the spinosuchus in my regular PVE, um, as long as it's allowed, because uh, a lot of the PVE now that I have is, um, you know, geared towards you know, legendary only or um, sometimes. Let's see if it's hybrids, then those guys qualify for it. But um, you just gotta kind of keep it on the events. If you have a weakness somewhere, the game will exploit it at some point unless you address it. Now we've got this one. Yeah, we really have a one. So obviously we've got um, 
legendary plus hybrids plus super hybrids here in this whole stint here. I'm gonna go down a little bit here. Out of these guys. Really, the legendary is just is a kind of a build with time thing. Um, typically, when I was first battling uh, level 20 VIPs were my sweet spots and I had a whole slew of them. Um, I have since paired most of them up with uh, their counterparts, uh, except for the Tanaglarius that uh, I continue to get more of, um, and made either level 30s, uh, because level 30s are kind of where I use a lot in tournaments now, um, or even level 40s where I'll use some for PvE. Um, but really, once you get past, or once you add an Interraptor, let's just start there. Once you add an Interraptor to your team, uh, you're going to be looking for supporting characters for that Interraptor. And I'm a big proponent of getting the Interraptor when you can, uh, because it uses a separate currency. Uh, obviously, it's got the um, super DNA associated with it. So anytime you can get a super DNA or a super hybrid moving, I suggest doing it. Uh, because you basically then allow your regular DNA to go to other creatures that you can now use super DNA for uh, a different creature in that same ballpark. So you'll notice I don't have a lot of carnivores outside of my Indoraptors here at the top uh, because I don't worry about leveling up. Uh, my carnivores, you know, I got my Pachygalosaurus level 20, I got my Uden level 20, I got a Pratotrope, I'm level 3 now, um, but ultimately I'm not worried about leveling those up um, because I don't need them. The Interraptors are what covers those holes currently. Now eventually I will level them up because I want to get level 40s of everything, um, but I don't need to focus on them for now. For now, I focus on Metrophodons, I focus on Zygnosuchuses, and Gorgosuchuses, uh, because those are the supporting characters that I need to help support the Indoraptor. Now, as I uh, grow my Indoraptor paddock, um, I have also been growing my Metrophodons, my Zygnosuchuses, and my Gorgosuchuses, because uh, and even my Gorgas, which is I just now started combining these to build up more level 30s. Um, I originally had one, uh, and then I've, in the last couple of days, created these three uh, other level 30s. And I just had them as level 20s, um, because the level 20s have less than a day cooldown. Um, and typically, all I need is a Gorgas, which is at this level in order to take a hit or two hits um, from something in order to build up reserves to then allow the Interraptor to take it out. Um, I don't need it really the amphibian to counter a carnivore because the Interraptor and the Metrophodon have such high attack um, that I can kind of counter any carnivore that's out there. Um, and then the second chooses unfortunately has such terrible health, but also has really high attack. Uh, and so it's really good at taking out Metrophodons or even other amphibians, um, if need be, because again, the attack is so high on the Cygnus uh, But that is, um, and then the 40, level 40 VIPs, you know, when I can, I make them, um, they're really good supporting characters. I will throw them every once in a while in. Uh, the Tanaglagris is good because it's got a lot of health. Um, the other ones are just kind of so-so, but I use them as needed in events. Um, and then other level 40s uh, or level 20 hybrids, um, it's just because I haven't gotten to the point of making the level 40 of that particular uh, item, because either I don't need it, um, or it's just not something that I'm looking to focus on. But I will be focusing on creating level 40s of all my tournament creatures, I'm going back um, and creating level 40s of all my all my guys, uh, especially the ones that I've used to make hybrids of, which all of these are, um, which is why they are low, um, or why they're not level 40. 
um, and then some of them that just don't have hybrids associated with them, uh, like you know the Sigmatosaurus, uh, Anticarpelta, Notosaurus. Um, those are all just you know over time. I'm gonna start creating level level 40s of them just as we go. Um, but yeah, so long story short, the legendaries are great. This is a very long amount of level 40s or level level legendary creatures that I have um, because it spins such a wide variety of um, classes, not even classes, rarity types. Because there's the standard legendary, there's the standard legendary hybrid, there's the tournament legendary, there's the tournament legendary hybrid, and then there's the super hybrid, uh, obviously the Indoraptor. Go. And we we'll won this one. Just gotta wait for him to make his move. So no what he does. Let's kill him. All right. And then we've got hybrids. Um, obviously, lots of different hybrids, uh, including rares and super rares all that kind of good stuff really for hybrids this is really my top of all of my lineups um regardless of rarity because the hybrids are just the strongest creatures in the game it's just the way it's the way it is a lot of the same stuff we just talked about also matches for these so for now we add in a few of the super hybrids like the the tappy jessel tappy jellocephalus uh the monostegatops um, should have the, there's the Spinotosuchus, um, you know, it's just, and then the Diplosuchus. They're all good creatures. Um, all of them serve a purpose. Um, you don't want to have just one of one class. Uh, you want to have a bench of creatures. All of that comes with time. You don't necessarily have to rush to any one thing, uh, but I definitely recommend going for uh, hybrids to get to super hybrids because like I said before the super hybrids run off a different uh, monetary system than standard DNA and so it allows you to have um, a different stream of kind of currency to be able to make other creatures so for that reason, I think it's a very, very good, good thing to have. I hope it doesn't go for it here. Okay, well, go big here. There we go. Yeah, go for it. Went for it enough. He's got two left, but we'll have five. It is a done dizzle. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of my my lineup uh, in a nutshell, if you will. Um, some of the stuff, uh, I got terrible rewards on this. Stand -up. I don't know why it's so bad. I do secretly hope for the glitch that gives you like 99 million DNA in this event. I don't know what that glitch is, but I secretly hope that it would happen. And then I wouldn't have to worry about DNA anymore. And I don't really have to worry about DNA anyways, technically, I guess, in a way. Um, because the reality is the amount of... See, almost maxed out. You need uh, to make a level 20 and then a level 10 in this, in this pack we maxed out. And by the way, I uh, readjusted my uh, other park over here. Um, Isla Novona. Um, got all my uh, boss statues over here organized ish. And I still gotta figure out where I'm gonna put all these guys here. Um, and this is the fourth anniversary uh, um, decoration. Kind of hope that they'll do something similar for five years. 
uh, potentially maybe uh, coming up would be be kind of sick if they do. Um, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what they're going to be doing for uh, the anniversary of the game. Uh, it's nice to see that we've got a Gen Two uh, creature coming. It's kind of exciting uh, for the next uh, Muzzle Souls. Uh, where is the original? Um, I still have to get this back up to level 40 because uh, we used it to create uh, the hybrid. Um, it's such a pretty creature. I'm really curious to see what the uh, level 40 will look like of the, of the new guy uh, once it's uh, out and about. Uh, I got termed this weekend for it, so hopefully you guys are paying attention to that. Get ready for it. I think it's in the market already, if I remember correctly. And somebody showed that it was available. Surfaces. There it is. So it's going to be between 9,000 and 8,000, somewhere in there. Stats, so-so, nothing crazy. It's kind of like another Tylosaurus, um, as far as it's like a kind of glass can status a little bit. Um, I think I'd prefer the extra health versus the extra attack because the talent source is already there. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do with uh, with this Mosasaurus Gen 2. If they're gonna do another hybrid with it. Um, I really, we really need a reef, a decent reef uh, hybrid uh, to counteract uh, the two uh, surface hybrids that we already have. And then obviously with that, a, uh, a cave, you know, and not just, because we already have a couple, we have the other at Leptostega, um, which is obviously a reef, but uh, it's only a super rare, we need, we need a higher end um, hybrid, and it would be nice if they did something with, with this. And the standard pack though, uh, it's gonna be available for, uh, for this guy. And it looks like it's gonna be Jurassic. It's got to shake the earth. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any rules because there's no little lock or um, little checkbox uh, on this either. So, be interesting to see what, uh, what we get. I still have to do the silver screen worthy, but uh, I can do that another time. But yeah, that is my, my lineup. And uh, if you got questions, throw them down in the comments. Otherwise, I will catch you on the next video. If you made it this far, I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. Subscribing to my channel and clicking the notification bell will ensure that you'll be notified as I release videos on the channel. If you found this video helpful, let me know by hitting the like button. If there is something specific you would like a video on in the game, please leave a message in the comment section below on what you would like to see. Again, thank you for tuning in, and I will catch you on the next one.